Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Here's Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. No, 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 please, don't do that. Well, why are you doing it? Well, this happens to be my house. You sure you don't need any help? No, thank you. I can handle it all by myself. Thinking of painting your house, Oz? Well, I didn't say that. I know you didn't. That's why I asked. Sure needs it. <laughs> I asked you not to do that, Thorny. Would you want to paste it back on? <laughs> be ridiculous. You want to come over and peel some off the side of my house? <laughs> your house need painting? I didn't say that. No, but you had your house painted the same time I had mine painted. So it seems only logical that if this house needs painting, so does yours. Then you are going to paint it. No, I didn't say that. You going to paint yours? If you paint yours. Oh, no, you don't. Us. Is there any law to prevent me from painting my house when you paint your house? No, there isn't. I use the same quality of paint, don't I? Indeed you do. I've even used the same painter. Uh, and paid him less money than I paid him. Uh-uh, struck a nerve, huh? <laughs> Seems to me you ought to be an expert on nerve. You've sure got enough of it. Oh, now, wait a minute. How selfish can you get? Or to put it another way, how cheap can you get? It isn't a question of being cheap. I just resent your tactics. I go all over town getting estimates, select just the right paint, make a deal with the painter, he gets halfway through painting my house, and you come over and dicker with him to paint yours for less money. <laughs> and furthermore, you did the dickering on my time. Uh, I happened to be watching him while he was working, and it occurred to me that he'd have a lot of paint left over. And since he just had to move his equipment across the driveway to my house, he ought to give me a break on the price. Uh, when are you planning on having your house painted, Oz? No, no, you don't. This time, you can have your house painted first, and I'll get the break in the price. Gonna have it done next week? I'm not saying. Ah, so what kind of a neighbor are you resenting the fact that I saved myself a little money? Didn't cost you any more, did it? No. Well, when are you gonna have it painted? I'm not gonna tell you. Look, why don't you have your house painted first, and then I can save a little money? You think I'm crazy? Why should I let him do my house first? Let him practice in yours. Besides, it's cheaper that way. <laughs> Look, Tony, besides the fact that I resent your chiseling in on my paint job, I don't like the idea of your house being painted the same color as mine. Ah, uh, you've done some low things to me, but this one is the lowest. I'm just protecting my individuality. Cheapness, selfishness, thoughtlessness. Yes, I guess you could call that your individuality, but if you want my opinion, you're just a carbon copy of me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Well, what was your decision? Did you decide to have the house painted? Uh, eventually. Well, when is that? When Mr. Thornery goes out of town for a visit. Well, what's that got to do with it? If you'd have been sitting over by the window, you would have heard the whole thing. Mr. Thornery wants to hitchhike a ride on our paint job. You mean like he did the last time we had the house painted? Yeah, can you imagine the nerve of that guy? Well, I think it's a pretty smart idea. Why didn't you think of it first, dear? Look, Harry, if I'm going to save money, I'm going to save it legitimately. Do what legitimately, Punk? Save money. You should have thought of that before you had Ricky. Since when is David permitted to discuss such things in my presence? Well, the point is, I just don't like the idea of Mr. Thornberry having his house painted the same color as ours. Well, that makes sense. Oh, I think you're right, Pop. His ought to be different. Of course it should. Why? Well, don't you believe in people expressing their individuality? Sure, but I never get a chance to express mine. Well, now, what do you mean by that? Well, take our bedroom upstairs, for instance. The one you laughingly refer to as the boys' room. David's side is over here, and my side is over here. Now, David and I are friends and neighbors, even though we are brothers. Yet his side of the room is exactly like my side of the room. Now, how can I have any individuality? Well, it's one room, and it expresses both your individuality. It expresses David's individuality. He was there first. If you don't like it, move out. Why should I move out? You move out. It would be easier. you got less stuff to move than I have. Nobody's moving out. How about my individuality? Now, that reminds me, I think it's about time you got a haircut, and I mean a real one. I have to keep it this way, Ma. Otherwise, people think I was David. Let's not be insulting. That's true. 
I have to wear his old clothes, walk around in his old shoes, sleep in his old bedroom. Who am I? Well, uh, just what did you have in mind, son? Why can't I fix up my half of the room the way I want it? Like you and Mr. Thornberry, Pa. Well, you know, that makes pretty good sense at that, Harriet. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Well, it's all right with me if it's all right with David. It's okay with me if it'll make him happy. Fix up his half of the room any way he likes. Well, son, looks like you've got the green light. Green? Yeah, that's a nice bright color. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Nelson. Well, hello, Mr. Baxter. Come on in. Thank you. I haven't seen you since you painted our house. Well, I guess it's about time again. <laughs> uh, my wife said Mr. Nelson called and wanted me to come over and give him an estimate. Oh. Well, he has been talking about having the house painted. Oh, Mr. Baxter. Oh, hello, Mr. Nelson. I'm sorry I couldn't get here earlier, but I just got your message. Oh, my message? Yeah, my wife said you called and wanted an estimate. Oh, this is quite a coincidence, but I didn't call. You didn't? No. Well, she said it was Mr. Nelson. Well, I wonder who it could have been. Hi, Mr. Baxter. Oh, hello, Ricky. The room's right this way, sir. Oh, did you? Of course, son. You mean to say you phoned Mr. Baxter? Well, yes, sir. Didn't your wife give you the message, Mr. Baxter? Yes, she did. I just assumed it was your dad. Oh, my voice is getting pretty deep lately. <laughs> I wonder if you could give me an estimate on how much it would cost to paint half a room. It wouldn't cost as much as a whole room, would it? I guess not. Ricky, we're not going to paint one half of the room one color and the other half another. Why not, Mom? You told me to express my individuality. Uh, now, look, son, uh, we don't mind your fixing up your half of the room, but no paint and do it yourself. Oh. I guess I better call the Emporium and tell him not to send over the interior decorator. <laughs> I better make sure he does it. Sorry, Mr. Baxter. That's okay, son. Uh, look, uh, I was just going to phone you myself anyway, Mr. Baxter. Uh, I wanted you to give us an estimate on painting the outside of the house. I, I did want to wait until my neighbor got out of town, though. Oh, Mr. Thornberry. Yeah. <laughs> He's a pretty sharp fella. Say, maybe if I paint your house, I could get his job, too. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't mind you getting the extra work, but uh, this time I'd like to have my house painted a different color. Oh. Well, then I couldn't give him as good a price. Well, uh, uh, believe me, uh, that doesn't worry me. Uh, I'm just interested in your painting our house. Okay, I'll look at it. Oh, uh... This sounds like a rather unusual question, but uh, what size coat do you wear? About your size, I guess. Yeah, that's what I, I think. Uh, would you mind trying this coat on, please? Understand, I don't want my neighbor to recognize you. Well, that's okay, Mr. Nelson. I'm kind of peculiar in some ways myself. <laughs> now, uh, I think the house is substantially the same as it was the last time you painted it. Oh, we've added this little porch on here, but uh, I don't think that should take much paint. The, uh... Hi, Oz. Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 hi, uh, Thorny. Uh, 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 how are you? Uh, now, uh, as I was saying, I think maybe if we spade it up over there, uh, Mr. Gardner, and uh, put some uh, roses, perhaps, over there, and, and maybe some... Uh, uh, Thorny, I'm just talking some business with this uh, gentleman. And uh, then perhaps some ivy might be nice, uh, Mr. Gardner. Uh, 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 Thorny, I'll see you later. We're talking some business yeah. here. So long. Uh, so long, Mr. Baxter. And when you finish painting Mr. Nelson's house, come over and we'll talk some business. <laughs> Can I give somebody a hand here? Well, Dave's got all the packages. Where's Rick? I don't know. Well, didn't he get downtown with you? No, I haven't seen him all day. Oh, well, he hasn't been around here. Unless maybe he's up in his room. Hey, Mom, Pop, come up here quick, will you? What's the matter? I want you to see something. Deep breath, and if you feel real brave, take a look at our room. Oh. How do you like it, 
folks. Just expressing my individuality. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Wow. Wallpaper sure does brighten up a room, doesn't it, Mom? Well, that's putting it mildly. Uh, Rick, who gave you permission to do all this? You did, Pa. Well, no, I didn't, son. I said you could redecorate your half of the room, but I didn't say anything about wallpaper. You said not to use paint, so what else is there? What? I could have put pinup pictures on the wall, but I'm getting kind of old for that sort of stuff. <laughs> Boy, what a ham. Well, what are we going to do about this? Well, there isn't much we can do about this. I guess not. Especially with the paste I use. Quick dry super stick airplane cement. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Rick. We appreciate what you're trying to do, son. But? Uh, yes, uh, but uh, why didn't you discuss this with your mother and me before you went ahead with the whole project? It's really all right, Pa. It's lively, it's interesting, it's colorful. Can't you see, Dad? It's me. <laughs> oh, hi, Dave. Your mother and I are just wondering what to do about the situation. Well, it's pretty rough, Pa. I've been sitting up there trying to read, and I can't even keep my eyes on the page. Those wallpapers keep pulling my eyeballs right out of my head. <laughs> Getting eye strain from trying to follow the designs. Uh, where did Rick get that collection anyway? Well, you know Lassiter's paint store? Yeah. Well, he got them out of the trash can in the alley. I can believe it. Yeah. It's getting so I can't even invite my friends up to my room. Oh, come on now, Dave. It isn't that bad. Well, it's pretty rough, Mom. You should try staying up there for a while. Well, yeah. I cleaned up there today. If you find any dust in the room, it's because I did it with my eyes closed. <laughs> How about this? Found it in a junkyard. Oh, you didn't have to tell us. Pretty individual, huh? <laughs> Holy smokes, what a horrible monster. I bet you I'm the only guy in the neighborhood with one of these. <laughs> a pa. Now, 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 now uh, Dave, uh, keep your temper. Remember what Rudyard Kipling says, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, He's already got that upstairs on the wall in a bamboo frame. like a snitcher, but have you seen what David's done? Well, he told me he was going to redecorate his room, but I haven't seen it yet. He's painting his side of the room. It looks ridiculous. Come on, if we hurry, we can stop before it's too late. No, now, wait a minute, Ricky. Let's be fair about this. This is David's side of the room, and he's just as entitled to express his individuality as you are. Yeah, but it looks ridiculous. I think he's gone off his rocker. Well, nevertheless, this is between you and David. You fellas share the same room, and I think you should work the situation out between yourself. Okay. If you're going downtown, you better bring him back a straitjacket. <laughs> This is my half of the room. I'm just expressing my individuality. But it clashes with mine. Yeah, that's the story of our lives. The story of everybody's life. In fact, you're giving me an idea for a composition. It's called individuality. Here, let me read it to you. The right to express his individuality is a precious heritage of every free man. However, it is also his obligation to exercise his privilege in such a way that he does not infringe upon the rights of his fellow man. Man has his rights as an individual, but he also has his obligations as a member of society. Stop changing the subject. You're ruining the whole effect of my side of the room. I'm just giving you a graphic example of the point I've been trying to prove. Well, cut it out before I do something desperate. You can have my reservation at the YMCA. I'm warning you, David. Go on, get out of here. 
Hey, come back here with that paint. Thornberry. I'll be right. My father will be right down. Uh, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Thorny, uh, this whole thing was uh, sort of an accident. Ricky just lost his temper. Mm -hmm. I understand. No, you don't. I can tell by your whole attitude that you don't understand. Yes, I do. It doesn't surprise me one bit. How can a kid learn self-control when he's got a father who's always going around blowing his stack? <laughs> Wait a minute. I never blow my stack, as you so crudely put it. Never? No, never. What color are you going to paint your house, Oz? That's none of your business. Okay, what color are you going to paint my house? Your house? Yeah, this one here. This black one with a white trim all around it. Do you really think I'm going to paint your house? Well, not personally. I'd recommend Mr. Baxter. I've used him before, and he's very reasonable. Now, just a second, Thorny. Just because Ricky happened to splatter a little paint on your house doesn't entitle you to a complete paint job. Well, have it your own way, Oz. Of course, it'd be a dirty shame to waste this lovely weather in a musty old courtroom. I think my old friend Judge Hopkins is on the bench. The man you beat in the playoffs at the Rotary Club golf tournament. You know, the one you accused of kicking his ball out of the rough. <laughs> Good old sore head Hopkins. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll think it over tonight. Okay, Oz. Sleep tight. <laughs> Well, thank you, gentlemen. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Well, thank you, Mr. Baxter. You did a fine job of my house. Did a fine job of my house, too, Mr. Baxter. Thank you. Bye. 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 You know, he did. He did a swell job on both houses. Look wonderful. Fresh, clean. Identical. <laughs> you know, I'm a little disappointed in you, Oz. You're always a guy who stands up for his principles. <laughs> I know this sounds foolish, but I didn't really think you let money influence you. But when I got down to hard cash, you gave up your individuality. Uh, come on in the house and have a couple of cookies. Thanks, Oz. You say Thorny gave you that jacket? That's right, and the shirt and tie, too. You know, he's really a good guy, Harriet. I think he felt a little guilty because he got the same deal with Mr. Baxter that he did last time. Well, I must say the outfit certainly is a bold stroke for originality. I don't think you've seen any more people dressed just like it. I think it's kind of youthful looking. He got it at Brown's department store. Oh, that must be Thorny. He wants to drive downtown with me. Hello? Oh, hi, Thorny. Yeah, I'm wearing it right now. Gee, thanks again. It certainly was a nice thing to do. It fits me fine, too. Ozzy. Yeah, I'm talking to Thorny. Uh, well, I don't know, but it must have set you back plenty. Ozzy. Uh, pardon me, Thorny. Yeah. Did you say Thorny got that jacket at Brown? Yeah, that, that's right, Brown. Uh, that was Harriet. She thinks the coat's terrific. She wants to know where you got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, gee, thanks again, Thorny. It's real great of you. Swell, Oz. Glad you liked it. <laughs>